Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So today I want to talk a little bit about Tong theory, okay? And this is my theory specifically on tongs. And theory, something like that, okay? Anyways, I'm going to talk about Tong theory today. Hope you guys see that in the frame just shine. Yep, sure I can. All right. So my theory on tongs is I enjoy very long-handled tongs. There's people who like short-handled tongs, and there's people who like medium-length handled tongs, but I like really long-handled tongs. And there's a reason for this. So I'm going to try to draw a couple pairs of tongs here. And you just have to bear with me. I'm just going to draw a little. It, there'll be rough sketches, but you guys can kind of get the idea, right? There's a... We'll just draw that like that. Here's one pair of tongs, and then we're going to draw another pair of tongs set with longer handles. And I promise this has a point if you just stick with me. Okay, so we're going to just draw this out. They don't have to be perfect, you just have to understand their tongs, okay? So I'm going to draw these two types of tongs out here. These are both flat jaw tongs that I'm trying to illustrate. But I want to show you guys this for a second. So my theory behind tongs is that the tongs are meant to take and hold the material, okay? And this, they do this by via the jaw, and this can be shaped however you like. My main purpose that I care about tongs is actually the reins and the boss area. This area here matters the most in any type of tong making. This here has got to be good and heavy in order to handle the mechanical load that you are applying to it. Okay, not only from the end of the tong, but right here what you're biting on. Okay, so this has got to be good and meaty, if you will. All right, there is a point where you make it too thick, and so therefore it's too heavy and bulky, and it'll wear on your hands after using them for a while. And then there's a point where you can make them too thin, and they're just not meaty enough or tough enough for what you're doing. So this brings me to why I like long-handled tongs. I like making this area, once again, nice and meaty. But the reason why I like having long-handled tongs and this is in plus of about, I like about 16 inches in length for my tong handles. Now that's going to sound insane for most people. And it can be between usually 14 to 16 inches in length for my tong reins. A lot of people like between 10, well, between 10 and 12 inches in length is the standard tong that you can pick up commercially, usually. Now they make them in all different sizes and ranges, and so, you know, there's a, they're a dime a dozen, depending on the maker. They make it this way, so this way they save on production cost, it saves on time, you don't have to draw out as nearly as much material, and there's a lot of benefits. You can ship it in a much smaller box, things like that and it can fit in a lot of different size toolboxes. As where 16 inches before the jaws uh, may not necessarily fit in everybody's type of tool kit. You may have to make your own toolbox for it. It can be too long of a tool. But the reason why I like the long tong handles is that they apply more mechanical force on the jaws, which allows me to get a better gripping power on the jaws with less effort out here on the end because tongs are nothing more than one big lever. So let me go ahead and show that out. We'll get rid of this. This is just basic, basic stuff here. If you have a bar and you put something right in the middle here, okay? You get a teeter-totter. The force is equal here and equal here, if you will. Okay, so if you had eight inches tong rain and you had eight inches of jaw, it would take equal, roughly equal amounts of force, clamping force. You know, you, you know, whatever you could apply here would be exactly the same on this side. It's a teeter-totter effect, okay? It, you're kind of at an account neutral. If we move this to this direction, okay, you are going to have to add force here 
a lot more force. This is going to be a lot more, multiple times more force now that you have to squeeze in order to apply the force here. This will be a weaker force out here. Okay, same way. And it's getting all goofy here. But same way, if you move that the opposite direction, okay, you move this little you move this little peg, ball, whatever it is, you move the fulcrum point, that's what it is, out here to this end, okay, and now it's hinging like so. Now it takes very little effort, very little effort, to, move, to apply a really great amount of force out here. And this is about as basic as I can explain it. Uh, you know, we've learned, this is just the theory of levers, really. Tongs are nothing more than a lever. So if you want to build and design a really good pair of tongs that will grip material very good and solid, you want to design them with a long lever and a short jaw past the fulcrum point. This will allow you to develop the most amount of bite. Where do we see this applied? We see this applied a lot in, let me try to draw them here. This will be very tough for me. Let's see here. Uh, probably gonna mess this up, but oh well. You guys can you guys can get it figured out here, right? I'm gonna just draw these out. This is horrible. I'm sorry. I'm making these horrible. Like that, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> that They look horrible. It's okay, bear with me here, folks, bear with me. We'll draw them out that way, there you go, that's better. All right, farrier hoof nippers. I could have just said that, huh? Oh well. Anyways, we can find this in farrier hoof nippers. We can also find this in things like pliers. There's a longer lever than there is a jar, jaw to apply more clamping pressure and more force here. We can also find this in things like, right here, really short jaws, really long levers, and a uh, crescent wrench there. Well, not crescent, but they are adjustable. You can find it in things like, give me one second, ugh, vice grips, same thing. Really long lever and leverage point which is actually on a reduction lever, to be able to provide a relatively short jaw to the percentage of handle. So now you may be asking your question, well, what's the proper percentage? That there cannot actually be defined. There's an optimum percentage that you could probably go with, and you could probably break that up into a third, kind of like a rule of thirds or you could break it up into quarters. So, you know, made three quarters of the mass and material this way and one quarter of the bite of the biting pressure. So on that, say on a jaw of a rein, right? So we're gonna draw this out. So on a tong rein, like so, just gonna draw that out. You may want this here, from here to be here, to be a quarter of what this is in length. Uh, you know, something like that uh, in percentage wise, which would actually probably wouldn't work out very well if you did that. But, you know, you, you could come up with your own theory, basically put. If you wanted to figure out what exactly this is for your optimum level, you can. I personally like the, a long as lever as possible to where it doesn't take and poke into stuff. I personally have found 16 inches works about right. 18 inches get a little long. One of the benefits to this is the longer the lever is, and if you design it just right, and this is a longer video, I understand that. If you design the lever just right, your tong reins, if you will, you design those just right, you will be able to put a thing like a tong clip on the very end of them, and then you can hold them right in this section and you don't have to squeeze and use all the muscles in your arms and wrists, which really, really helps, really, really helps out uh, after a long day of forging and stops you from developing things like carpal tunnel and tennis elbow and a lot of that type stuff. So the way I design my reins is 16 inches in length, 
and a nice long distilled taper. So I like them to have a nice long taper, nice long elegant taper to them. What this does is this provides a natural spring to them. They're constantly reducing in surface tension across the entire piece, allowing this to be able to be bowed or flexed and store that mechanical energy of you squeezing in them and apply it to the jaws out here on the end. That's my personal favorite and preference. If you're making your tongs uh, today, maybe give that a shot and see if you like them better. If you don't, there's always short handles. That's always an option. So anyways, that's going to be it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found it informative. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section down below. Uh, let me know your thoughts on it. What's your favorite tongs that you like to take and use and the handle length of those tongs. That'll be it for today. Thank you all for watching, and like I always say, God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one.